Welcome to the Level Up Your Band podcast, episode 54. Hello and welcome back to the Level Up Your Band podcast. My name is Gavin Patterson and I'm here with a uh, hooded Julian Pombo. <laughs> How's it going? Hi. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just, I, I'm in that kind of mood today, man. I just want to be cosy. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'm good, actually. Uh, for the first time, not same old, because I've got a new hobby, <laughs> uh, which is uh, online competitive first person shooters, uh, mostly Apex Legends. So for those of you who watch and listen, and yeah, I, I'm one of these people now. I get up, I I do like aim lab training on my computer. It's a whole thing. It's a part of my daily routine. It's a part of my routine now. So we'll see how long it lasts, but it's fun, man. I've been having a good time. Right. Uh, I'm still making music. <laughs> I'm not like, uh, I'm not, I've, I haven't just, you know, thrown everything away to the wind to just, you know, drink Mountain Dew and <laughs> eat Doritos and and game epically. Epically, yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> How about geez. you? Um, it's very snowy. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, woke up this morning and there was like almost a foot of snow up where, up where yeah. I am. Uh, it's not as, it's not as bad where we are, obviously, because I'm... I'm in the city, so yeah. it's, uh, but it's still it's pretty thick yeah. for for like city snow, if you know what I mean. Like it's a good, probably like half a six, foot, six inches, half yeah. a foot deep. Six yeah, it's inches, probably yeah. about nine here, which is still um, a lot. It's yeah, it's pretty pretty bad, but <laughs> it's it's quite fluffy stuff. It hasn't frozen yet. Um, that's going to be interesting because yeah. uh, I think tomorrow night or the following night um, is to get down to minus 10. So that's going to be fun because that, that snow is just going to turn to a big thick block of ice. Um, Hell um, yeah. Which isn't fun if you're living in a, oh, in a caravan, that. in a residential caravan. Um, For sure. I had to thaw out my uh, gas anyway. bottle this morning. That was fun. So <laughs> I had to wade through the snow to try and find it and then I had to dig it out. Uh, thawed out with a hairdryer. <laughs> got it going. Got some hot water, which was nice. All right. Um, that's good. That's, yeah, life in Scotland. Anyway, it's it's quite rare, but yep. it's not it's not, it's not not too rare. Could be worse. It could be Canadian or oh, something. Oh, that's just, that's, that's ridiculous. That's just living, living on an iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's mental. Like, you see pictures, I can't remember which, uh, I think it's in, like, in parts of northern Japan. You just you like there's pictures of like where the road has sort of been dug out and there's like, you know, ten foot like walls of <coughs> snow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's yep. insane. Anyway, that's enough. That's enough about the weather. Now on to today's, uh, <laughs> yeah. So broadcasting. Um, happy new, happy new year podcast. Yeah. This is episode one of technically season two i'm just i'm not going to call it season one or season two it's just going to be new just another episode yeah. but yeah that's yeah so i thought i would start with a spicy one uh just to get yes. everyone everyone annoyed um <laughs> so this was based on a a, co a conversation i had with someone and it got me thinking uh about whether if there, were, there was any truth in what we were talking about and we were talking about the status of where where rock is right now. Mm. Um, so the 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 clickbaity title of this episode is is rock music dead. Well, so, it depends on what you mean by rock, and it depends on what you mean by dead, <laughs> and it depends on what you mean by is and music. <laughs> it depends on what you mean by music. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like Thanks, as Jordan. soon as I read that. As soon as I read that, uh, that was the first thing that popped in my head. I could, <laughs> I could just hear them in the back of my mind. Yeah. Well, uh, so is rock music dead? Mm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna because this this is a it's a common thing I've started seeing pop up 
don't know if you've, mm. if you've seen it. People like Mate, talking about this in videos and things. Yeah, I mean, to be to be real with you, people have been talking about it since like, yeah, like two thousand and something. Yeah. Uh, and to be real, I think people have even been talking about it since like the eighties and nineties. Like, yeah, you know, it's it's just occasionally popped up because the definition of rock music had changed over all those times. So they were like, it, is it dead now? Is it not dead now? Is it evo-? anyway? But that's yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of we're we're cut. Uh, we're kind of so going a little bit too far. So we kind of need to first of all roll it back a little bit. I'm gonna give you my sort of general definition of what rock is yeah so rock and from what i've heard and what i've come to understand rock is basically mm. it's quite simple it's just music with at least one distorted electric guitar so mm. that's a, an electric guitar that goes through an amp and you turn up the gain until it goes a wee bit crackly and if it does that it's rock music um mm. And you're like, well, what about songs that are clean? Well, you're still using amp gain to get that yeah. sound, to get that guitar sound. It's an electric guitar yeah. sounding yeah. thing. I mean, <clears throat> not to mention like the, the composition of most of these bands is like these electric instruments, electric guitar, yeah, electric yeah, yeah. bass, um, organ, it <clears throat> depends on the band, but, you know, an electric organ, you know, not like you know some kind of you know it, you know it's all it's all electric electric keyboard yeah yeah, yeah. um another definition i've heard is uh it just means that the music is sonically very dense it's quite it's quite thick it's got big thick chords it's got leads it's got big heavy drums it's got big bass it's quite a, it's a thick sound that's why they called it rock because it's solid as a rock yeah um that, i've yeah, heard that okay. definition as well um, which, yeah, I, I can I can see that. Yeah, fair enough. Um, that makes sense. Pre pre rock, um, you the the sound was much more fluffy and lots of harmony and chords and stuff. And then when rock came around, yeah. it was more hard edged, more rough. Sounding. Yeah, totally. And <clears throat> not to mention everything like if we you know what came before, which is jazz, like harmonically and sonically far more complex yeah yeah than, than rock music is really yeah yeah you know like um if you're thinking about jazz you're thinking big bands you know um like the like duke ellington for for example yeah perfect he's example. like he, he hated being called a jazz a jazz musician or a jazz composer uh because he just saw himself as just a contemporary c- composer really um it was just he was using jazz jazz stylings but um but yeah, it, very, very complex, rich music. And then when you get to rock, it, it becomes less about the, the harmony yep. and it becomes more about the, the rhythms and uh, everything else gets simplified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but rhythm and energy and things like that get ramped up. Yep. Um, so we'll, we'll take a little dive into some, mm. some history um of rock music um mm-hmm. uh, I, this also comes from a conversation i had with one of my boomer parents um <laughs> about the their their parents generation and i kind of mm. it was fascinating to me a wee bit because I, I really don't know an awful lot about that and yeah i shall share this valuable information mm-hmm. so rock as far as i'm aware was born out of the post-war post-second world war baby boom so mm-hmm. at that time, the population of young people, or the, the sort of category of young people, that age range was the largest group of people at that time. Mm. There, there was, I, I don't think there was, there's ever been a boom in babies in modern history. Uh, there was a huge swell in sort of teenagers uh, all, all at the one time um, right. after the war in the West, anyway, mm. um, and I reckon that that the fact of that happening, it, it because there was so many teenagers, uh, there was a huge deep hunger for something new, some new music. <laughs> yeah, it, there's that, and then uh, I mean, won't touch. We probably won't touch that deep into it, but there's the political aspect of it as well, 
which is that that had an impact not so much at the very beginning like if we're talking like 1950 something yeah yeah um but definitely like um sort of 60 63 64 onwards um there was this sort of like you know wanting to be totally different and separate from you know our parents and stuff like that and wanting to express ourselves in our own way and new i don't know new ways of thinking yeah yeah uh Reason by stuff I, like that. Reason why I would say that politics didn't influence uh, well. Rock, rock is separate because it was it came, it came first. Like people, people say, oh, like um, the political times gave rise to the Beatles. That's not true. It's absolutely not true. No, it? no, um, the political times didn't give rise to the Beatles because you have to. There was nothing extraordinary happening when the Beatles first started. No. Not really. They were just they were just lads. They got political later. Yes, yes. Or one yeah, of them yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. Um yeah. so um with this sort of new new generation coming up, they mm. when after the West, you know, defeated the Germans and all that and after mm. after the war, nineteen forty five there was a it was a huge change cultural change um mm -hmm. pre the pre the two wars there wasn't really such a thing as a teenager the teenage identity no. didn't really come till after the second world war it was kind of like you're a kid you're a kid you're a kid you're an adult yeah like uh, you would, there was no yeah. there was no transition period there was no time to go out have fun experiment do all that kind of thing and that i mean that's what and even then when you did i mean like when you became an adult uh was also a lot earlier you know yeah, yeah if yeah. we're thinking like you were technically an adult when you were like 15 16 i guess yeah my grandpa yeah. left school at uh 14 or 15 and yeah. he was well, married he was married at 21 and had his yeah first child oh i don't know 1960 yeah. whatever whatever that was i mean if you're wanting to go back like way back like historically like maybe like the 18th, 18th century to a point 19th centuries like when you're 14 15 that's when you start going to balls and things like that but they were adult occasions yeah. they weren't teenage hangs or like kids hangs or whatever it was just like you're, you're a child for a little bit and then suddenly yeah you're right it's just adult yeah know, it's adult time um so that Th this this whole new sort of mm. liberal let's let the kids go out and play kind of thing kind mm -hmm. of happened and I, I think that gave birth to this this sort of movement mm. so the the new music that was coming out right they were they were, they were playing uh, at that point we're talking late late big band that was that was the the last thing the last mainstream jazz to come out of uh, the radio speakers was arguably mm -hmm. big band big band kind of mm -hmm. after the second world war big band started to tail off to the end of the 40s yeah, um, yeah. and then you then you start getting just more like like bebop and hard bop getting played on the radio if at all and you, and right. then so like smaller groups singers singers like individual like singers with bands started to become more popular like frank sinatra and um Dean Martin and all that stuff that was all post war um largely um but this this whole new thing came about where the um the bands got smaller to start with and they they started playing like the 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 electric guitar had been around a little bit for a while but kind it of never like been a proto electric guitar it never yeah. been used as like a proper main rhythm driver mm -hmm or lead driver yeah. in a band so that's what happened it became the lead singer plays the guitar um which was a cool thing and that's what kind of gave rise to this type of music mm. so in the past this is where my uh boomer parents uh stories come in um before their time so when they they were like the first generation to go and listen to this type of music right because they were they were born in the sixties, so they were born a bit late to be boomers. They are, I think the the cut off for boomer boomerisms is nineteen sixty six. Any any people born after that are Gen X. Um, All right. So, okay. Um, their parents. This is interesting. 
their parents who were born in the 20s and the 30s, they, like, I've got one grandparent, and when they went out to see bands or mm -hmm. listen to bands or um, dance, it was set dances that they did. So it was like mm -hmm. you had to know the quick step or, like, different types of ballroom-style set dancing. And that was usually yeah. done to sort of traditional... In Scotland, it's, like, traditional... Scottish bands like uh, Cayley bands and stuff, but if if it, Jimmy Shan yeah, if it like. was pop music at the time, it would have been so they would have been going to the the dancing in the yes. late forties. So it would have been, would have been some style of jazz. Uh -huh. It would have been uh, so it's a see, it, big band, yeah, and then so eventually doing, Skiffle yeah. was a biz, was a big thing uh -huh. in Britain back in the, so you, the early fifties. Yeah, so <clears> yeah, you're right. Quick step, Foxtrot. Uh, the Charleston's, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but you're right; it's a very set genre. It's a very set style. Quite formal, and there's some moves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, you had to learn how to like dance properly, and there was there was a, there was a set mm -hmm. way of doing things. But when rock came along, the the sort of the kids didn't want to be dancing this set stuff, this conforming stuff that their parents dance to uh, so, uh, although i would argue that they were still doing it it was just <laughs> it started to evolve <laughs> just, though yeah it did start to evolve um, yeah. it was like 1950 came and it was a bit more free form uh, especially mm -hmm. by the time it got to the 60s it was freestyle free form and it kind of gave birth to the way people yeah. dance now at parties they just kind of go in the dance yeah. floor and they just jiggle around like idiots um which it has no form I mean, or yeah, nothing yeah. You have certain <coughs> moves, you know, like the good old nay nay, and the and you know that kind of thing. No, I'm saying though, like it's not leg. like I mean, set but dancing. like again, it, it's not a set dance. You don't just do this the stanky leg for like three minutes. Right. <laughs> you combine it. You take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you just put it all together. Yeah, yeah. And you do whatever <coughs> you like. I, I just sh goes to show how out of touch I am because I have I no idea. Um, um, like just being in a, a wedding band, you, you see a yeah. lot of, you see a lot of people dancing uh, to popular music or rock music and yes. there is no rules. They, they just kind of Basically, from my eyes, who I hate dancing, I think it's the weirdest human thing that any humans do. Um, I, I just don't get it, personally. I just think it, it looks ridiculous, and I think people that do it look ridiculous, unless it's done pro professionally and properly. But see this sort of disco-y dancing on a dance floor, I, I just think it looks so bizarre. I think it's such a bizarre concept, but that's just me. Um, but Kaylee dancing, or... like actual set mm -hmm. waltzes or like old, old traditional big band style dancing it's got structure it's got actual mm -hmm. i would i would say the sort of more modern rock so sort it of gave rise to yeah. different styles of dancing that was kind of more free free form and was a little yeah. bit less conforming uh, that's just i don't know yeah be talking at my backside but no no you're right you're right there definitely there was dance moves but you could combine the dance moves in any order you liked. Yeah. Uh, and it's still the same case today. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there, there isn't just a style of dancing just called twerking. And it's a very set <laughs> number of twerks. <laughs> uh, it's just you you do a little bit of twerking and then maybe you do a little bit of something else. Yeah, yeah. But you get the idea. Yep. You know. So um, from, from around 1950-ish... Uh, you've got artists such as like Elvis, Chuck Berry, Bill Haley, Buddy Holly. Eventually, yeah. they yes. they took over the mainstream channels. So that that style of music with the guitar up front and and vocalist rather than band, because mm. it was usually you know Glenn Miller's orchestra or you know. Mm. Uh, all, all the, like you were saying earlier, like Duke Ellington, yeah, and it was all bands, yeah, kind of big bands. Um, and then yeah. this solo artist stuff started to seep in with guitar up front, and and mm -hmm. you could argue that that style, that format, lasted all the way up to the early two thousands, from nineteen fifty to the early two thousands. It was mainstream. Um. And and it started it started off as yeah. rock around the clock all the way up to 
Green Day. Yeah, I yeah, I would definitely. St- I mean, there's kind of like a no. Yeah, there's kind of like well, again, it's the kind of music that I listen to. Uh, you st- there's still bands that are like you know, um, band with main person at the front. Yep. But um, yep. Most of the, most most of the time now, now it's it is just this this is the one person you know like Beyonce or solo artist yeah 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 it's not Rihanna and the blah blah blahs yeah it's just Rihanna so like you know. like how rock borrowed from jazz um so so like Frank Sinatra was the lead singer in a it's it's not jazz it's not it is it's it's an offset of jazz but it's not. It's it's not even big band what he did. His was he kind of he was like a solo artist with band. You know the, the sort mm. of earliest like him and a lot of others at the time, and um, where you had these personalities, these singers that would come with a band. Um, yeah, but it was it was an offshoot of the the jazz uh, mm-hmm. world, like the very outer fringe, right before rock happened. Um, yeah, and. Rock borrowed that idea and then, you know, cut the band size down. And rock was a lot more accessible. You didn't need 10 years of training. Uh, you could literally pick up a guitar, learn three chords, play some blues scales, and then you were, you were in the band. Um, it was a lot easier. Mm-hmm. There was a lot... And that, that, that's probably why there was so much rock, uh, because it was mm. so easy to pick up. Like, you could just mm. go and buy a cheap guitar and then go and make some noise with your pals. Um, yeah, that, and you can also argue the fact that people had less distractions, if you know what I mean. So, like, if you're going to find a hobby, and music was the coolest hobby, like, literally everybody tried to play guitar yeah, yeah. at one point or another. Oh, yeah. Or something, you know, drums. Or if you weren't good enough to play guitar, I'm sure you can handle bass, yeah, yeah. you know, and that's where that old trope comes from. <laughs> yeah. Um, harmonica, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you have to remember, like those instruments were like crazy, crazy cheap. Yeah. Um, at the time, like, um, <coughs> I mean, I mean, even even if we're like compensating for like, uh, what you call it, inflation and stuff, like a Hofner violin bass, which now costs you around like a proper Hofner violin bass made in Germany. Cost you about a thousand pounds, probably just over a thousand yeah, pounds. Yeah. Back then, it was about thirty-five pounds, which would have been around two hundred quid or something. Yeah, in today's money, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So cheap, cheap. instruments were, yeah, well, good, like kind of good instruments were kind of readily available. You could just walk into a Woolworths and just pick up a Woolworths guitar. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Like they, they like uh, I can't remember which. I think it's Tesco, T E I S C O, and uh, are were like a Woolworths okay company. Uh, and you still find Tesco guitars kicking about, um, oh. just really cheap, really cool looking guitars, um, but yeah, super available. Everybody could pick them up. I was watching. Um, um it was a documentary. My dad was watching something. Um. Mm-hmm. It was a documentary about status quo, um, right? Which is like the most mainstream rock band, probably, probably ever in this country. Um, mm-hmm. uh, they, the, the guy was talking about where he got his guitar. He bought his Fender Telly mm-hmm. uh, that he's been using since dot the year dot. He bought it in a music shop in Glasgow for about seventy pounds. And it is a nine. He said it was like a nineteen fifty nine or nineteen sixty Fender Telecaster. It's now worth about <laughs> like probably like three or four thousand pounds, probably more, because uh, it's his guitar now. It's, it was Rick Parfit. Uh, so, I wish I could buy a nineteen fifty nine Telecaster. <laughs> <laughs> Which even then, if you account for inflation, that's still only like two hundred, three hundred pounds. Yeah, so it was it was a Which decent like investment, you know. Pri- yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even at the time, I hate that. I, 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 it just annoys me so much when you just hear stories of like, yes, I bought my first house for like three pencils and a and a raspberry and like yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yep. It's like, mm-hmm. uh huh. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah. My um, my aunt's house, which um she moved into in 1960, she bought for four thousand pounds. And all our family at the time were like, You're you're an absolute idiot doing this mortgage carry on. You should be renting four thousand pounds, you'll never pay that off. So they paid off their four thousand pound mortgage in twenty years. The house is now worth over a hundred thousand. <laughs> it's just mad. Absolutely mental. Um yeah. so yeah, as I was saying, like rock, that's where guitar based music yes. took over the mainstream channels from around 1950 ish to mm. around the mid 2000s, maybe about two, yeah. two, we'll say 2005 ish. I, I would be, I, I, I would, <clears throat> I would push back on that and I would go as far as 2010. Okay. I think 2010 was the last year of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guitar music, you know, where you can clearly hear the guitar. What we mean you know, by that so is, at any, on any year, the reason I would say earlier is because of this. Mm. If you look in the top forty, and the majority of the songs that are on that list, the majority is guitar-based mm. music, and I don't think that would right. be true of two thousand and ten. That's why I would say. No, no. All oh, right, okay. I, I, I see your point. So I, I would say point. around 2005, if you were to go back to 2005 and look in the top 40, I would say the majority of songs that were on there were, were guitar-based, um, mm. give or take. So what happened is what we're, 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 we're that's the, the begging question here. So um, I've got a couple of things here. I think the one of the biggest ones here uh, I'm going to put first uh, around around about the early two thousands, digital had been the digital world, the electronic digital world had been developing since the eighties, and it had been notoriously crap and slow and unreliable for the best part of fifteen years. And it really wasn't yeah. until after the millennium that it started to become mm -hmm. uh, more um, efficient, uh, yeah. better quality, easier to use. You know, you're talking and like nobody really had a personal computer, a PC, until like 1998, 99. We didn't have a computer in the house until 2000, 2001. Um, wow. Like we were quite late. Um, mm. But they, they, like computers weren't really widely in everyone's house until the rollout of about <laughs> Windows XP, which was like 2001 or something. Um, yep. So 2005 comes along. And people can buy recording technology now for not very mm -hmm. much money and have it on their personal computer in the house. It's a little bit difficult, but it, it, for the first time ever, it was possible for not very much money. So mm -hmm. what happened was because of this, um, it became easier for people to set up small recording studios like the one I have right now. Um, I mean, when I started in 2012, I started with a laptop and an interface and a couple of mics in a room. Um, and <laughs> I had more recording technology than the Beatles had in 10 years of making music. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. Um, that made it, um, it, it made this new recording technology made large scale recording studios kind of unprofitable. Because if you could make uh, electronic dance music, which everyone was dancing to in the clubs, it kind of took off in the 90s. It, start, it started sort of underground and became more popular and started rising up. And I would argue the, the sort of birth of electronic dance music, which actually came off the back of um, the punk stuff. So the punky guys, after punk died, they all, you know, loaded up on drugs and then went over to Ibiza and started nightclubs. And then they started this electronic dance music thing in the 80s. And it got more popular and popular. And it gave rise to things like house and club music in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then it became so popular that it actually took over the mainstream and knocked rock off mm -hmm. the top. Um, and then it yeah. combined with what was happening in America with rap and hip hop. And they've sort of joined mm -hmm. forces and they've, they've kind of now taken over the whole mainstream thing. So... yeah. It it's you you can record a full album of electronic dance music from your bedroom. Calvin Harris is a perfect example of that. He recorded his first 
project all in his home recording setup. He didn't need a big format, massive, you know, expensive recording studio, five million pound recording studio. Yeah. Um, there's no need for it. Um, so big recording studios um, round about the mid 2000s started to go out of business because they couldn't, nobody was buying it anymore, especially with the internet. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the internet. So, um, there's also another argument to why it started to die, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's any truth in this, and you can maybe coin in. Uh, I've written here, rock belonged to the previous generations. The new generation wants something fresh, just like the last time. Yeah, yeah, there is There's some truth to that. Um, it's just, I feel like, and again, this kind of goes back every generation. I would argue this... <coughs> this has just been the case in, in music anyway it, um, you know when when music started to become more secularised which would be around the 17th late 17th century probably I would argue yeah because after that it was mostly folk music um, even in the renaissance there wasn't that much like yeah. just music that wasn't for religious purposes so yeah and you notice that every period kind of every generation has its own its own particular sound it's just things lasted a lot longer which is why you have like the classical period that is at least i don't know like 70 80 years something like that i'm not an expert on this yeah, yeah. but um it's always been the case you know um each generation has its own take on the world and its own lens that it's viewing things through and rock was one way and then yeah now it's just uh and now it's something else, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, So technically, yeah, um, rock, rock is dead, but also it's just, it's not dead. It's because you can that, make an argument yeah, that yeah, it's, yeah. That's my, that's my it's point. It's just evolved. It's, it's as dead yeah. as jazz is and jazz ain't dead. Um, no, j people are still playing jazz. People are still writing jazz. Yeah. I did, I, I studied jazz music, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I would say rock's day in the sun has come and gone. Where rock music dominated the mainstream, most popular listened to music, mm. it no longer does. It's I think it's gone now. It's 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 electronic dance music, hip hop, rap, kind of thing. It's kind of amalgamation. I don't know what what you would call this new style. You know, with the cicada hi hats and. That's called trap. Yeah, um, and over compressed, <laughs> over compressed, auto tuned, quantized. Just, I don't particularly like it. Maybe I'm just old. Um, yeah, listen, man. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't like it either. It's, it's, a lot of it is. A lot of it's unhuman it's garbage. Yeah. Um. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here first. When we're the paragons. Of, well, we are level up your uh, band. We're not of truth. We're not level up you your. Know? You know, we're uh, not exclusively. Level up your SoundCloud game. It's not that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so like, yeah. the internet is what I was going to say. Like, the the uh -huh. internet is probably was the final nail in the coffin because we talked a couple of episodes ago about, in a um, number of ways. Yeah, I talk about the the Eye of Sauron. For those who don't know what that means, it's um, a reference to Lord of the Rings. So, basically, what I mean by the Eye of Sauron is like the most concentrated focus of attention of the most amount of people. So mm. I've got a decent sort of analogy. Um, the the eye of Sauron that was once pointed directly on rock, the most amount of people co concentrating on the most amount of rock at that time, it will never be as popular as that again. That's my prediction. I could be wrong. So it's kind of similar to how if you, I don't know if you're aware of this because you, you weren't here and you've not grown up in in Britain and the sort of that kind of thing. I don't know if maybe it, it, they had it in South America. But even to this day, you will find boomers who will talk about Dallas, right? Dallas was a popular TV... Pro it was probably the most popular TV program of all time. It was massive. I'm talking tens and tens and tens, pro probably hundreds of millions of people tuned in to watch Dallas every week. It was insane. I mean, 
Um, my mum's favourite show at the time, my mum's two favourite shows at the time, I don't know if she watched much in the 70s, but yeah, yeah. what I remember watching at, at home was Friends and right, okay. uh, A Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's all I remember. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, Dallas, there you go. Dallas was um, basically, um, it was like Game of Thrones, but times a thousand. Um, it was like extremely popular. It's, it does nothing similar to Game of Thrones at all. Dallas was about, um, oh, it was like rich oil merchants in Dallas that were all like, it was like a drama almost like a soap almost but um it was the most popular show of the time so what i mean is oh yeah um the entire western population who had a telly were tuning into mm -hmm. dallas around that time because there were only three channels on the tv so the focus of attention the sauron's eye was like a freaking laser beam right everybody was consuming that it was it was insane so highly concentrated but now with mm -hmm. the internet the star of Sauron is so diluted now that yeah. nothing will ever be that popular again. Nothing. Because, yeah. because you can't... Even when I was at school, um, when I was in primary school, we only had four channels on the telly. I didn't even have Channel 5. Like, and that's all anyone ever had. So we would, we would go to school and go, oh, did you watch that film last night on Channel 3? And 90% of the time people would go, yeah, it was good, wasn't it? See, now, you can't do that because everyone can watch anything they want at any time, anywhere. It's, yeah. It's, I'm going to be real with you, man. I don't even watch TV anymore. Exactly, yeah. Like, like who does? Yeah. I don't think anybody does. Yep. It's... Um, it, the only time I've ever gone. watched TV is, like, when I when I go to... Well, back in the before days, when I used to go to Rachel's house to watch the Great British Bake Off. Yep. And even then, I would half watch it. Yeah. Because I can't stand the new one. Channel Four, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I prefer I prefer the old BBC days. Yeah, yeah. You know, so anyway, that's it. That's it. That, this isn't level up your baking. This is level up your brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can maybe do a, a like a, a a side a side hustle and April and, Fool's episode. Level uh, up your baking. Level up your bread. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so do it. the, the we, we could be confusing with oh, Rock's dead. With the fact that times have changed and that you yeah. you no longer have this sort of concentrated laser beam of mm. attention from lots of people on one thing, that now now you can go onto different charts and it's like oh there's mm. like two hundred million people listening totally. to this chart and it's not in the mainstream. And, and you also have to remember that the idea like that that question or that statement rock is dead has kind of like been repeated every couple of years since rock's inception because guess what rock music as a whole changed so much it went from being like blues based to then being like progressive and then you have psychedelic rock and you have you know bands like you know like, like jefferson airplane we were talking about them yeah, yeah, yeah. for a while and then um metal but metal's still technically rock music in a way oh, it's, it is, yeah. you know the electric guitars and all, it, it's, it's part of that family of course it is yeah you know so rock music isn't um and there's still rock music being made today there's still like emo bands there's math rock of course yeah you know people are still making rock music it's just that for some people who were born around a certain time, for them, for them, it'll just be, it won't, it'll be unrecognizable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, see, like kids in my class at school, they were listening to Green Day, they were listening to Lincoln Park, they were listening to Nirvana. Same. But yeah. when when I was in when I was ready to leave school, the kids at, who the kids who were coming up to the, the bottom ends of the school, they were listening to Katy Perry. They were listening to <laughs> yeah. to that kind of uh, stuff. Uh, they weren't listening I to think bands. We went to, <laughs> we went to different schools because uh, for uh, well, I don't know. Certainly in 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 my school, it was like uh, indie bands were big, so like Bombay Bicycle Club and uh -huh. indie artists like Ben Howard and you know like that that <coughs> that that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was like a, a totally different breed of music altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's not. It's like it could seem a, a negative thing, or like, oh no, like the thing that I like is not, it's not as popular anymore. 
Um, well, yeah, but it doesn't mean that no one's going to, everyone's just going to like stop listening to it. Um, it's just, it just means that the, it's not trending if you want to use internet terms. Yeah. It's not as like, trending as it was. Um, exactly. Like, like Bach isn't exactly trending right now. But he was. I still listen to Bach. He was. You, and he, he was, was tre trending well, big time. Actually, actually he wasn't. And then he was. He didn't start I, yeah, training yeah, yeah. until after he died. Aye, right. Um, because he was just like a wee local guy that wrote music for for his church and just wrote music for people around yeah, him yeah, and yeah. that kind of a thing. And then it wasn't until a, a lot later that he got this huge revival. People who listen to classical music and feel free to correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, I think the biggest rock star in history that we get or as close as we can, uh, the earlier, uh, earliest we go is is Mozart. Yeah, hundred percent, probably. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, like people still listen to Bach. People still appreciate Bach. People people still play him. Yeah, you know. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, it's 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 funny because um, the like jazz, um, obviously rock was birthed from from jazz blues right so mm -hmm. so like blues blues came around gave birth to jazz and then an offshoot of that became rock right because it was blues based uh 12 yeah. 12 bar blues but with an electric guitar um mm -hmm. like you think of chuck berry i mean every every song that man has was um 12 bar blues so bar blues, um, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um he 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 literally wrote a song which has two chords. Genius. Um <laughs> I love Chuck Berry, he's great. Um his lyrics are hilarious as well. There's so, some amazing lyrics that, that man wrote. They're just some of them are so funny. Um they were always sort of humorous. <clears throat> yeah, well I mean that's the kind of music. It's not it, it wasn't necessarily serious music. No, it was not at all. Music to have fun to. It was really good. Um but mm. like, like it borrowed from the previous um, mainstreams, shall we say, modern tunes that yeah. you're listening to in the radio that all sound, you know, over compressed and overproduced and everything's auto tuned and everything's quantized. Chances are that was written on a guitar by a single songwriter or a couple of songwriters. So oh, yeah. people are still relying on the good old trusty Strat to compose, and it will never. It will never die. It's now in the DNA of whatever is new. Rock has imprinted its DNA in what's to come. The same way you can trace it back, all the way back to Bach, uh, with Bach chorales and, and all of that is all, pre all that, you could say, genetic material is present in all music. And it, it's all, they all borrow from each other. It's like a, a lineage. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's not dead. It's just... Over here, it's just changed. It's just over here and doing its own thing now. Um, yeah, and there's lots of variety. <laughs> I don't think it ever you will know? die because I no, think they, they, like, they, they, this just there's yeah. nothing better than just like picking up a a, a guitar, learning three totally. chords, and then going into a rehearsal room and turning up. There, uh, turn there it are up. still there are still punk bands, and they're still excellent punk bands yeah. still playing. Um, what I uh, or what people of our generation, I guess, uh, sort of like called dad rock. Yep. There's still dad rock bands. Oh, yeah. They're still playing. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Um, and people are still listening to them. Dads, probably. I'm kidding. I'm just being a bit silly here. <laughs> but um, you get the you, you get the thing. So, like, um, there is that idea. I like, I don't know if I mean it. Yeah. But, like, sometimes when people say rock is dead, they mean their own very specific version of rock. And it's like, well, no, actually... It's not. It's just sp split into these beautiful branches, and it's yep. probably it's one of the most diverse kind of uh, genres, subgenres of of music. Probably, There's so many yeah. different types of rock: yeah. southern rock, math rock, like emo prog is technically rock. a type of rock. And then you've got prog rock. You've got all the different variations of metal. I mean that, and then yes. itself. There's like a thousand different. <laughs> variations yeah for sure there's even like um there's like uh there's a mongolian metal band yep which is awesome they uh, they country they're music they feature in that um, it's rock. It's, um uh, jedi uh, uh the, the 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 star wars 
game that's like Dark Souls. What's it called? Fallen Order. Uh, is it Fallen Order? Jedi Fallen Order, yeah. Yeah, if Jedi Fallen Order, that's right. Um, the song that he's listening to at the very start, Mongolian metal band. Oh. And they play all the traditional like um, Mongolian instruments and stuff. It's really cool. Um, it's cool. But yeah, it's just split into lots of beautiful little yeah yeah little things. It's so it's yeah it's not it's not dead at all. It's it's, it's just it's just somewhere else. It's not in the mainstream. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's not dead. Correct. I'm not in the limelight. I'm still alive. At least I think I am. Yeah. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. It's the same idea. Yeah. Like it, it, if you if you treat everything else with that kind of that kind of idea, you know, like this mug is not getting enough attention right now, mm -hmm. so therefore it does not exist. It's just it's an, it's an absurd notion. You know, yeah. so just because rock music isn't getting a lot of attention now, doesn't mean that it's become irrelevant or dead. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's just not getting any attention. It still exists. Yep, totally. So it's like this is the the thing I get confused at and don't know. I don't. I just don't know anything about it. If you're, if you write, I don't know, this new style of music, like it's like dance music or whatever it happens to be, you're Calvin Harris, you never, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, if you don't play any instruments and you just make beats, right, and then people sing to your beats, you never get to go to a rehearsal studio, you never get to play and jam with a band and no, go deaf don't. in one ear from the, the smacking right symbol and, like, I don't know, there's something about that that's, that's very human and I think people would potentially miss out on the the act of making music together yeah there there has been for sure uh, <clears throat> uh it's even seeped into a lot of rock music as well you know you get the stereotype of like the you know the sad boys with their like little like active guitar like plugged straight into the computer <laughs> and they've got their sample drums and they're making all these like really complicated gent breakdowns yep it, 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 yeah, I think that's less to do with. I think that's just more of a, a times kind of a thing. Yep. I think people are just becoming a little bit, especially now. Although I think there'll be like, I think after this, everybody, this whole thing that's happening, everybody's going to be want to be social, oh, like yeah. super social. Because yeah. I think people are actually crying out for human connection. Yeah. You know? Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, you're to you you are right in a sense that I would I I mean, if you if that's what you do, if you if you just make beats, uh, let let us know. Is it lonely? Is it not? Yeah, because I don't I'd know. I don't know the lot protocol. Of these people do this. I've I've no idea yeah. the protocol. Like, do you do you go to rehearsal studios to listen to beats, or do you just have your own sound set up, or like, how do you know that it's going to land when you take it to a club or whatever, or do you just like I don't know anything about it. Like I'm, um, obviously we are we are biased. This is level up your band, not level up your beats. So we're like, we are we want bands to be a thing. We want you know, our yeah. thing is rock music. Um, it's like that's that's our bread and butter. Um, pretty much mm -hmm. we, yeah, yeah, we just enjoy we enjoy playing in bands and yeah, we want other people to enjoy playing in bands. That's our thing. But if there's mm -hmm. if there's a if there's like anyone who's like doing not band stuff like what do you what do you like i don't even know the the ins and outs of like how do you make music how do you how do you write music that if you can't play a musical instrument how can you write a song like i just don't i just can't how do you do that it's mental where does it come from like i suppose keyboard skills like loops and things like that is yeah constructing loops from pre pre pre-made chords and things like that i don't know i'm speculating um it fascinates me uh it's like it's like djs um they play music but they they play music physically they play it like a cd but they can't play an instrument um and it's it's always it's quite fascinating um especially like sound engineers as well like when i encounter sound engineers that aren't musicians i'm like but how do you know how to do it though like because I don't know. I just feel mm. like you need to know a little bit about music and how it works. 
Yeah, I don't know. Totally. Because because yeah. I can't unlearn how to play a musical instrument, so I can't put myself in the mind of someone who doesn't. I know. suppose we're like um, we're like we're we're like those to come up with an analogy. Basically, it's like people who have never studied painting before or drawing. Yep, and don't have any reference point, nothing, and then they just go. I'm just going to go ahead and do stuff. Yep. Um, and then they do end up coming out with something. It's not what you expect. But I'm sitting here from the point, from my point of view is like, how, where would you even know where to begin? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what do I mean. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, totally. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, there was this, this has become, I think it's more of a recent thing, but definitely when I was, when I was studying something else, um, I was uh, there was that idea of like forget everything you've learned, mm. start afresh, mm. do whatever, and I think it's a, I think it's just nonsense because <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't, it's impossible. It's impossible, yeah. You know, uh, it, like you and and then you ca you can't actually do anything meaningful that means anything to anybody except yourself mm. because you don't have anything to go off of do you know what, do, 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 do you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah yeah like you need you need that um i don't know anyway this this is a rant for another day um right. this has got nothing to do with rock music i think um <laughs> <laughs> we're just sort of spiraling into something else um but yeah that was an interest basically i guess like the 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 conclusion of this is it's not dead you dummy right it's just not uh, it's it's just not getting any attention or any mainstream attention. Yeah, yeah, it's getting it's plenty of attention. A bad thing. It's getting plenty of attention. It's getting lo yeah, it's getting loads of attention. Like, um, <coughs> there's even bands. There was actually there's one band that I was thinking about doing and and uh, writing up some show notes for, which is mm. interesting. But you know, bands that were like, um, like American Football that released like one album, and then were like quiet for something crazy like 15 years wow didn't gig didn't do anything and we're still relevant <laughs> <laughs> we're still getting listened to what? and stuff and then they came out again with like a second album and then, yeah and they're still and they're still they're gigging now and they're doing re really well and they're getting loads of attention but um it's are they are, are you if you're just a regular person are you going to listen to american football on Radio 2 or Radio 1? Probably not, unless you listen to Radio 1 at a very specific time. Mm. You know? Um, actually, that's a, that's, a, that's a point that I forgot about. Even Radio 1 yeah. is like, it, it, it's like split up. So you have like certain shows for certain types of music yeah. and... Um, you know, obviously during the day you're going to be getting the... the, the stuff that's getting the most attention just now but there's still like late night shows that like you got radio six and they, they play all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff and yeah yeah so much choice now uh, yeah cool so um that was an, yeah, an interesting know. deep dive it's not really that was it was just a kind of a just a cool a good conversation yeah it's, it's not really helping anyone level up their band but th no. i was, thought it was a good sort of um i just I had been talking to someone and I had seen videos online of people going, Rock's dead and here's why. And I'm like, well, yeah, no. So I wanted to do an episode on it. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, at this point, like, I don't think any style of music is going to be alive or dead. It's just going to exist. Yeah, yeah. And people are going to listen to it and some people are not going to listen to it. It's just... It's just the it's just what we live in now, you know. Um, cool. Yeah. So that was um, episode fifty four. Tanking through these yeah. episodes. Um, as always, if you're enjoying our wee podcast, give us a rating or a review. That would help us a lot. Help it reach more people. Uh, mm -hmm. Around the world, we have more American listeners than anything now. Um, That's awesome. It's bizarre. Is it the Scottish accents? What is it? Tell me what it is. 
<laughs> Tell me why you like us. <laughs> I feel like, uh, honestly, I think there's probably, you can tell me, Americans, if I'm wrong, there definitely is a bigger band scene in America than there is 100% up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, that's kind of where it all kicked off anyway. I mean, it makes sense. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna quote, that's awesome. I'm gonna that's quote really cool. one of the class Neds. A Ned, for those of you who don't know, is a, I think it stands for non-educated delinquent. That's exactly what it stands for. Um, yeah. so when I was at school, um, oh, do you do music to me? Uh, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do music. Uh, what kind of stuff do you like? And uh, I shared, uh, it was a YouTube video, it was a, some band. And they said, oh, it's that guitar sh <laughs> <laughs> Right, and I was like... I only listen to DJ Buck fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, that's kind of the sort of general mainstream opinion now, is like, oh, that guitar stuff. Oh, I like, like, uh, I don't know, Katy Perry and all that kind of stuff. If you turn on the mainstream radio in, in Britain, yeah. it's absolutely horrendous. Anyway, um, I'm glad we have American fans. That's that's cool. Um, yeah, this is cool. That is really cool. Uh, if if you want subtitles, um, <laughs> sorry, I, I just don't feel like going through 54 episodes and subtitling no, it. No, no, no. Um, um, Anyway. anyway, oh, and for you, for you, uh, American fans, if you want to get a taste of Ned music, YouTube DJ Buckfast, <laughs> Bad Boy Devil. <laughs> so that's all I'll say. Oh no, it's so bad. Anyway, right. Um, I've got a couple of ideas for next week, but we'll see what we're going to do. Might do another band analysis, or maybe not. We'll see. So until mm. then, hope you have a good week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.